in charge of his 32nd international and that puts him second in the all-time list behind the Welshman Derek Bevan and from the start Wales on their own 22 just try and move the ball but they're penalized players went over the ball as Scott Gibbs took it on the charge and here's the early chance for France and for Thomas Castagnier this was a messy take from that kick out and there's the hands on the floor holding on to that ball and Jim Fleming whistle happy early in the game as you would expect and there's a simple chance for France the third time in fact for Jim Fleming to officiate in a game between Wales and France ten years ago he was in charge when France crushed Wales 31-12 four tries to nil and he was in Cardiff two years later in the special game to mark the opening of the new floodlights at the Arms Park Castagnier saviour of France at Lansdowne Road a month ago with a last minute penalty at Stade de France he's failed with his first attempt and that's a major let off for Wales and big disappointment for the French certainly is a major let off and the remember Wales have always started badly in the, the two games in Scotland and France and Ireland so a let off there is just what they wanted I suppose Castagnier blonde hair restored and it seems the vogue behind the scrum for France today Richard Durtat's centre the same sort of colouring here goes Castagnier and Tamak that came to Scott Quinnell Welshman couldn't take it knock on both ways it was interesting to see Wills chasing numbers there. Robert Howley said that one of the problems in the last game against Ireland that they didn't chase and put pressure on when they kicked the ball down the field. Howley leading Wales for the 11th time. 1-5, lost 5. His record so far in charge. Up comes Shane Howarth. Nice, neat little sidestep. And it's Wales on opposition 10-metre line. The drive is from Peter Rogers. That's the new loose head prop. All changed in the front row. Howley out to Jenkins. Jenkins, the little dart through in the clear. Looking for support. Oh, Scott Gibbs was there but couldn't get the ball. It's a clear-cut chance and it should have been a try for Wales. It certainly should have been a try for Wales. A great break by Jenkins. This is a rare thing to see Jenkins make the break. France weren't expecting that. But Scott Gibbs should have been on his shoulder when the outside half makes the break. And that's a, a vital miss for Wales. It's certainly been seven points for them. Neil Jenkins just slicing through the opposition. As you say, his main contribution normally is with his goal kicking, his tactical kicking and his distribution. But uh, a first-class break and uh, surely it should have been a score. It certainly should have been. I think Thomas Castaneda was drifting out for Scott Gibbs and obstructed Scott Gibbs when he tried to get with Neil Jenkins. But great play by Wills. Neil Jenkins, of course, will be very, very keen and eager to do well this afternoon because he was tormented and teased out of the game by Thomas Castagnier at Wembley in the last game of the championship last season. Boring in in the front row, not pushing straight. Jenkins created the chance for the try. Now he'll have a simple attempt to put Wales three points ahead. Well, it's good to see Wales putting pressure on France in the scrum because the Welsh scrum this season hasn't been particularly good. Peter Rogers has been put in here on the loose head to tighten up that scrum. A remarkable point scoring machine, the outside half for Wales, 656 points in international rugby, and they include 41 for the British Lions. And here's the blow for France. It seems that Richard Durt will have to leave the field. As Jenkins puts Wales ahead, three points to nil. And David Okan of Poe is on. And a touch of deja vu here because Okan gained his first cap by coming on to replace Durt against Wales two seasons ago in Paris. <laughs> Scott Quinnell's ball brushes aside the challenge of Thomas Lombard. 
Pauli. And again, Enterprise from deep and Shane Howarth in the clear. Excellent run. Howarth over the 10 metre line. In and out, and he's looking for David James. David James tried to get in the best position to support. Away it comes from Castaniad, but that's two searing breaks by Wales in the opening five minutes. Well, Graham Henry was saying in his interview before the game that Wales has to be bold, and they certainly are that great running by Shane Howarth. I thought it was a forward pass when he went to the full-back. David James is working hard to get with him, and again, you can say that's a let-off for France. This is Howley on the break. Gibbs is outside. Howley tries to go himself. Five metres short. Remarkable opening by Wales. The try is there. And Colin Chavis is the scorer. It's no more than the red shirts deserve. They've created the chances. And at last, one has been converted. Wales 8, France 0. And the French is that. Defence is non-existent. Robert Howley going through a, a huge hole there. But Chavez did well to pick up that ball. And there's a lot of work to do. And he drives over for a tremendously important try for Wales. Colin Chavez, his third for his country. His first in the Five Nations. The other two came against Argentina at Strati Park last autumn. Jenkins converts. And a remarkable start for Wales. This is remarkable. Who would have thought that? The Wales have started so poorly in the, the, the previous two internationals. But this is perfect. We must say that the French are very complacent, certainly in their tackling around the fringes of the scrums. That's Ben Evans. Almost 19 stone at tight head. The little chip is for Matthew Robinson to chase. It's well placed. And that's the new cap for France. Marc Reynaud from Narbonne. Now then. That's Comba right through the gap. Antemak is outside. It's Mark Taylor for Wales. Antemak for France. And it's a try. What an opening to this game. Emil Antemak. Gets his 18th try for his country. And a magnificent repost from the French. Yes, I don't know why Frank Comer kicked this ball. A lovely outside break. Spins through the gap. Huge gap there. And then Entemark still has a lot of work to do. I thought he could have passed that ball on to Entemark. Went for the kick, but the fullback had enough pace to keep Mark Taylor out. And that's another good score by France. He looked around just to check where the support was, decided the kick was the best option. Mark Taylor tried his level best for Wales. The lone red shirt there, but it bounced for Ntumak. And France have got their opening score. Castanier spot on. Eight minutes play, JJ. And the score, France 7, Wales 10. Well, this is great rugby, that's typically French, so they're lying deep. Running through that gap and kicking on. Mark Taylor did well here to get back, but Entemak had a bit more experience and strength. He scored against Wales in 95, and Tamak, he's repeated. Gained his first cap against Wales as well in 94. And it seems Akain might have gone to outside half with Castaniad into the centre. Here go Wales again through Colin Chavez. Peter Rogers wearing one. Just a little untidy. But this is Chris Wyatt. He's been a revelation this season in the red shirt. Jenkins. Jenkins almost through the gap for the second time. It's really positive play by Wales. Howley hanging on to the ball after that tackle. Lovely play by France again, and it's Lombard. Still going, and they're streaming up now on the right. Here's another marvellous chance for France. It's out to Bernat Sal. Bernat Sal with plenty of support. Number eight is Lievremont. 15 metres short, France. And it's a Welsh penalty as France go over the top. This game has been played at tremendous pace. 
The French prepared to run from deep positions just what they're good at, really. So Wales have to concentrate all the time, but did well to get back to stop this try. Philippe Bernard Sal of Biarritz. A constant try scorer, but uh, pressure relieved this time by Neil Jenkins. But it's so refreshing to see two sides prepared to attack from all quarters of the field. Yes, both sides have picked a team for mobility, and that's exactly how the game plan is going for both, both sides. Yes. Important take for Craig Quinnell, hardly been used throughout the championship so far in the line for Wales, and that's been one criticism, the lack of option, but this time Quinnell takes it and gains a penalty again for Wales. Yes, it is good to see a variation in the line out. Uh, Craig Quinnell is often used at all this year, as you say, Hugh, so that's good thinking by Wales, making the French think in the line of themselves. The Welsh line it has been a contentious point, in fact with Ed Morrison unhappy with the way they arrived late at the line-out and didn't allow them to do that up at, uh, up at Murrayfield and Graham Henry wasn't pleased. He thought it was well within the law. But it is on the fringe. Wyatt soaring high. Jenkins again a well-practiced move to try and release midfield players. Well, it's a chance for Wales, but I wonder, did Jim Fleming uh, blow a second or two early there as Wales had possession and the chance, perhaps, of some advantage as well? Yes, he's very strict with Mark Reynaud there, diving over the ball, giving the penalty away. Indisciplined by the French, they would have told the Portis of giving penalties away in their own half with a kicker like Neil Jenkins in the Welsh camp. Jenkins has become only the second player in the history of the game to cross 700 points, incidentally, in international rugby. Michael Liner of Australia, way out ahead at the top of the list, with 911. But Jenkins is now on 701, including 41 for the British Lions. That's why he's accumulated so many points on the international stage. A remarkable level of consistency. And he's had a marvellous opening to the game in all facets of play. He certainly had. He's, he's under a lot of pressure from Arwell Thomas in Wales. But he started well, running with the ball, passing, of course, those kicks that he's put over. 13 minutes gone. And Wales in the lead by 13 points to 7. And here they go again. The change from uh, Howarth, but that's easy for Entemach. Maisie runner, Entemach, so elegant with the ball in hand. He's a joy to watch in the fine tradition set up by the likes of Serge Blanco in French rugby. Carbonneau, Ocaniad outside half, Castaniad at centre. There's Thomas Lever Ramon. And it's come out to Castaniad again. The will of the wrist player. Stay on, right, stay on. <laughs> Not quite the depth France would have wanted, and it was quite easy for David James, big man on the left wing. <laughs> Almost 14 and a half stone, and standing at six foot three, David James of Pontypridd. That was a very difficult ball for David James. Made, it, made the skill look very easy, but the French are bearing down over his shoulder like that. Isolated on his own, they had to hold on to the ball and wait for support. One of many players in the Welsh side, not born in Wales. David James, in fact, although fully Welsh, was born in Zambia. Against the throw for Wales, but Tim Fleming belatedly blows the whistle, not for the pushing in the line-out, but for dropping on the ball on the ground. So a chance for Castaniet again. And uh, Robert Howley just quietly inquires why. Robert Howley also thought that the ball didn't go in straight. Jim Fleming didn't agree with him. Castaniet 
plays his rugby now for Cast. Strokes it beautifully between. He's now got his range. That's a warning sign for Wales. It's an encouraging one for France. Graham Henry. Now then, his thoughts on the opening 15 minutes, I wonder, John. Remarkable. We've got a scoreline of 13-10. He'd be quite happy with that. Wales have started much better today than they have the earlier in the season and play some good rugby and got points on the board. French captain Raphael Libanez taking that deep restart by uh, Jenkins and here go France again, Okanya. Ventimac lost the ball, chance for Welsh advantage. Sinkinson is in there, number seven. Offering the close support, Graham Henry's explanation for Sinkinson coming into this side. He's a, a more destructive player than Martin Williams, who's been replaced. A more destructive defender. Harder in the tackle. Fiercer on the ground. To be fair to Martin Williams, he's played behind the front five that struggled in the, in the early two matches. It's a much better platform this afternoon. OK. 16 minutes gone, it's Howley, Gibbs, Quinnell. Almost worked, back to Howley. Good aggressive tackling by France, but Matthew Robinson again. Strong and quick at close quarters, and Wales have it through Gibbs, back to Jenkins, out to Howarth. Howard for the gap, it's out to David James. James for the corner, inside, tantalisingly close again for Wales and Jenkins. The ball's gone forward, and Jim Fleming is playing advantage France. Carbono, Ocania, even behind their own try line, they're ready to go. And that's Castaniad, brilliant. Superb reverse pass, magical French play, and they're flowing upfield. It's out to Bernat Sal. Bernat Sal, magnificent cover by Robert Howley, and what a passage of play. A little flick by Thomas Castaniad. Fantastic. Look at this, this caught wheels unawares, really. Look at this guy here. Craig Connell trying to get it in, but watch this flick behind his back here. Look at that. How can you defend against that? But Robert Howley did well. He's working hard to get back. And he's the one who makes the tackle on Bernard Sal out on the wing. Look at that flick pass. That's what you want to see, isn't it? It's quite remarkable. Less than 18 minutes played so far. We've had 23 points. We've had a try apiece. But it could so easily have been three or four tries to either side. Yes, it's great entertainment. Tremendous pace. One of Wales can live with this pace. For this little man, I mean, he does this little flick behind his back, like Joe Mazo, who's now the team manager of France. It's joy to watch, and the French crowd love it. Look at him dancing, and then that little skill flick, fabulous. Right, boys, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, you're coming. And this was a well-placed pass from uh, the one wing Thomas Lombard to the other Bernard Sal. He thought he had a sniff of a chance here, but across came the Welsh cover. Big row from the French crowd. They took that on the Welsh throw. And rumbling clear is Frank Tournay. Yago the French pack. Even there, so close in the corner there. Tournay, tight head prop as well. He wears three. And it was almost, almost a second French try. Yes, it was a poor throw in by Garin Jenkins, but the tackle by Brett Sinkinson was tremendous. As you would expect from a man who's played all rugby in New Zealand. Comes across and drives him into, into the touch line. That's why Sinkinson was selected. There he goes. Takes man and ball and makes sure there's no try. Wyatt. Above all, in that line-out. And Howley, deliberately in field, doesn't want to concede that line-out. Great take, David James! David James has got Sinkinson with him. Here comes Neil Jenkins as well. They went the wrong way. Another clear-cut chance. And it's still there as Chavez powers his way up. Almost to the 22. This is Chris Wyatt. He supplied the scoring pass on so many occasions this season for Wales. And it's another penalty. And it's a thrill a minute. You can't take your eyes off the ground here. 
A magnificent game of rugby and a magnificent take by David James. Yes, I thought David could have kept on running once he got back on his feet here. There's hardly anyone in front of him, but he decided to pass that ball on. Of course, there's no one with pace outside him then. Exactly midway through the first half. And we've had enough thrills already to last the whole 80 minutes. And I'm sure France are as surprised as anybody uh, with the way Wales have started this. Neil Jenkins, 62 caps today. Becomes equal with Gareth Llewellyn, the lock forward. Second in the all-time list for Wales, 10 behind. Yayan Evans. And again, proof of his value to any rugby side. Jenkins strokes it cleanly. So it's France 10, Wales 16, and we're into the second quarter. And Wales deserve this lead because they've played some positive rugby. They've even missed a few chances. Neil Jenkins having a great game. Castanier, the restart. Comba was in front, but behind uh, referee Jim Fleming's back. Great height from Jenkins. Well taken as well. That is Thomas Lievremont, the number eight, doing valuable defensive work and gaining the penalty for his side as well. Jim Fleming in quickly. He's not the most popular referee in France at the moment, JJ, because he presided uh, when Stade Francais lost in the semi-final of the European Cup, uh, Cup this year in Ulster. And he was also in charge when Brive lost last year at Bath. Both denied, both French clubs denied at the semi-final stage. Are there any British referees popular in France? Castanier, call position. And time to breathe. Injured Richard Durt. That comes down from Olivier Gouze. Comba. Again, the little chip through. Robinson, good cover, but can't take it cleanly. And here goes the back, it's his second try. <laughs> Matthew Robinson hangs his head in disappointment. That's his first mistake at international level for Wales. So it's France, 15, Wales, 16. As you make a mistake against the French and they will punish you. There's a harmless kick ahead. Robinson had plenty of time. The ball was bouncing, bouncing up for him. Should have steadied himself. I think he wanted a counter-attack. Then he bounced kindly for him to mark a lovely sidestep of his left foot there to score the try. Just a little too eager here, Matthew Robinson. The first job in that sort of defensive position is to make sure of the ball, that it can't go to the opposition. He rushed it and looked back in anguish as Untermax sidestepped his way to the corner. That's his 19th for France, his second this afternoon. The post, the difference between France leading and Wales leading. You have to feel for Matthew Robinson, he's defending particularly well for Wales. This bad luck, really. I think he was constantly more on sprinting up the field, taking the ball, instead of steadying himself and just kicking it into touch. Jenkins this time just chipping it onto the 11 metres to try and get his forwards underneath that ball. Good Welsh pressure, putting France on the back foot. Jim Fleming decides Wales moving forward, they get possession. And once again, the displeasure. 80,000 people crammed into this magnificent new stadium. What an arena. And what a feast the players have provided so far. It's worthy of any stadium. Try scorer and Tamak is off the field at the moment, so France haven't got a fullback. I wonder if Wales can sense that and capitalize. Here goes Robinson. Well tackled. Ball a little 
slow this time for Howley. He's enjoyed some quick possession, but this time caught at the base. And there's Emil Intermac. That's quite right, Hugh. Intermac was off the field. Wills should have chipped that ball onto that far corner. There's a huge gap there with a the fullback off the field. As Gary Jeff is brought back to uh, try and inspire others and shore up the deficiency in the set scrum. That's why Peter Rogers is there as well. Conda slicing through. Travis, an important tackle. But it's still French ball. Jim Fleming spreads his arms wide. The ball was out, he said. So no offside by Wales, although the French crowd thought so. It is offside far, end of that ruck, and uh, so it's a penalty to France. Now then, will they go for the corner, the line-out and the drive, or will they aim for three points and try and get back in the lead? Jean-Claude Scrella, Pierre Villecreux, the coaching uh, team here. Such visionaries in, in charge of a national side. And then Joe Mazo, the mercurial Joe Mazo, as the team manager. Yes, yeah, we see the influence of Vilpre in the way France are playing the game this afternoon. There is a big contingent of Welshmen in this 80,000 crowd. Splashes of red all over the stadium. But it's France now on the offensive. No, shifts it out to Kine. Welsh defence closed. Sinkinson is in there. Jenkins did his bit as well just to hold up the French. France move forward. They get a set scrum. And uh, in a very, very promising position as well, right in front of the post. So many gaps have appeared in both sets of defensives. You think if they get the ball here, they must score. Wait, wait. That was good defending by Wales, not to concede the penalty. Not in straight. And that's a rarity these days. Howley wants to take it quickly. Scott Quinnell. Sinkinson is having an impressive debut so far. He's very close to the ball. That's a high tackle on Peter Rogers. Jim Fleming is blown. Christian Califano. Jim Flemison was accidental, but still high. I didn't think it was accidental. I thought it was a dangerous tackle. Not a very Christian act. <laughs> 28 minutes gone. And it's uh, France 15, two tries for fullback and Tamak. The kicks for Castagnier. Wales just the one try. That didn't look straight. Jim Fleming waits to see if France can gain an advantage. It's Welsh ball, so he'll bring them back. Wales are trying to vary their line out, but uh, they've only got the one genuine jumper, and that is an Achilles heel for them. Chris Wyatt is the only recognised jumper in there, and uh, perhaps they'll pay. Again, a very complicated line out. I think they're, they're overcomplicating things, as they have done all season. Califano, Ibanez, the captain, Tournaire. That's the French front row against them. Peter Rogers near side for Wales. Garin Jenkins and uh, the big man Ben Evans is 23 years of age. Well, that's gone against Peter Rogers. Having a rare old battle with Frank Tourner. It's a massive crowd here, JJ, but I sense there's less noise than there is to be at Parc des Princes. I haven't heard the band strike up yet, <laughs> or the whistling and the crowd and the, the howling and the hooting. Long way to go, Hill. In it goes, Ibanez finds his man at the back. They're all joining in, and Tamak is sensing a hat-trick. 
Wales offside. And Jim Fleming points towards France. Perhaps not offside, perhaps dragging them all down. And that's an offence. There's Frank Comber in the midfield for France, a real handful. Short, very similar to Scott Gibbs to look at, really. Difficult to tackle. Now Castagnier has the chance to push France ahead for the first time in this game. Half an hour played. Concentration amidst the noise. France 18, Wales 16. And just nine minutes remain of the opening half. That's Reno, the new cap, the replacement for Olivia Magne. Christian Califano, who's an extra back on the field. Recovered from injury, regained his place in the, in the national side. Comba again, he's creating all sorts of problems, but Scott Gibbs has taken it away from him. And here comes Colin Chavez, Ben Evans in support. He's placed it, and now it's Howley out. Jenkins, Jenkins. Tremendous tackle from Castanier. Jenkins did well on the ground to maintain uh, possession, and that's Chavez and Gibbs, the Swansea combination. Driving on is Rogers effectively as well. And now it's Quinnell, Scott Quinnell, into the French 22, Howley behind them. Out there is Robinson. Howarth didn't give him the ball. The fullback tried to go on his own. But it's still Welsh possession, they've held on to it. And this is Mark Taylor, Taylor of Swansea. It's still Wells ball and it's still Robert Howley. Neil Jenkins, Danny James, James the second Wells try. Brilliant play by Wales. And this is superb entertainment. That's another great try by Wales. The forwards did so well to set this ball up in the middle of the field and Jenkins brings the man in. David James stayed from a deep position. Remember, he was in the middle of that. Uh, Racky got out onto the left wing to score over in the corner. Well done, Wills. Battled back into this game. A lot of work to do by David James, but he's a big, strong boy. And Bernard Sal was never going to stop him. Good try. That's David James, his fourth for his country. He's gaining his 14th cap. The man from Kenfig Hill in mid Glamorgan started his career in Bridge End, but now plays with Neil Jenkins at pont de -Prix. and it was that combination that paved the way for the second Welsh try and for the red shirts to regain the lead. He hasn't failed so far, this the most difficult, and he's just pulled it wide. But France 18, Wales 21, Wales went for a decade at one stage without uh, scoring a try out in Paris. They've scored two today, they scored three two years ago. That was a, a thrilling game, but this one is even better. Yes, and that try started way up the field when Scott Gibbs ripped the ball out of Frank Comba's hands and started the, the, the move through the forwards. Scott Quinnell. Coach Henry said he was looking for a big game from the Quinnell brothers. They've supplied it so far, and here goes Howard again. To James, he's turned inside the net. Charles is running to get in support. David James didn't look. Again, it's Howley. Howley could go all the way. Hagano comes, but it's out. The Craig Quinnell is galloping over. Magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. He scored against Ireland a fortnight ago. He's got his second in the red shirt. And what a try this is for Wales again. Craig Quinnell working so hard to get up onto that right wing position and sprint over. What a try. And even the, all the French crowd are applauding Wales. Fabulous rugby. David James on the left, and when he lays it back, Robert Howley. I thought Howley was going to go all the way here. The gap opened up for him.
but intelligently you could see that Craig Cornell was out there and the big man he loved this with his second try for Wills fabulous he's a pound or two under 20 stone had there been anyone in the way they would have been crushed I'm sure but there wasn't the pass was clear and triumphantly Quinnell went for it Brother Scott scored a memorable try in 94 in Cardiff when Wales beat France. Father Derek had his first cap against France in Cardiff, coming on as a replacement. Remember that picture when he brushed the policeman aside to get on. And now Quinnell has made it a family hat-trick against France. Neil Jenkins has added the extra two points. It's France 18 and it's Wales 28. And this is their highest score ever in Paris. It surpasses your 25 points back in 1975, JJ. And the rugby they're playing is spectacular. Great to watch, and that try flow the whole length of the field. It's OK, hands up, Ash the ballon. Who would have believed it? And there could have been so many more. So many chances have been created by both sides. And Wales again, the little chip from Jenkins. They seem so less inhibited, Wales, this afternoon. France are joining in. It's a marvellous spectacle for everybody. And here come France again. Emil Entermach held by Mark Taylor. Scott Gibbs battling for the ball like an extra flank forward. Scott Quinnell. Wales have got it. They've taken it away from the blue shirts. Jim Fleming is playing advantage, and it's Peter Rogers popping up again. And... Uh, He's repaying the faith that Graham Henry placed in him. Not only is the set scrum a bit more firm, but we've seen Rogers three or four times with ball in hand in open play, in broken play already. Yes, we were worried about his fitness for this game. For this game, he's played a tremendous pace and he's featured a great deal in the, the, the flow and movements of this game. But, but France are allowing Wales to play rugby. Scotland and Ireland went up in Wales' face, faces and they could not, not get that flowing rugby. But France are lying deeper. And of course, these three-quarter movements, bringing in Shane Howarth all the time, who's doing all the damage. Shane Howarth had a marvellous debut for Wales against world champion South Africa at Wembley back in the autumn. Disappointed a little in the opening two matches of the championship. But is revelling in the spaces being offered to him this afternoon. And Graham Henry was saying during the week that he thought France would allow Wales more time and more space to play because they'd want to create more themselves than either Scotland or Ireland. This is almost 50 metres for Jenkins with the angle. He's hit it well, but too much effort and it's pulled wide. And Tamak thinks about the counter-attack. Two minutes remain of the opening 40. Five tries already scored. Two for France, three for Wales. Castaned. Slipping and the ball goes to Matthew Robinson. Jenkins out. Gibbs well played. Chavez. Chavez at the French midfield. Sinkinson the link. And Gibbs again in typical fashion, ducking into the tackle, trying to power his way through. Fine service from Howley. Taylor. Wales are playing behind that uh, tackle line at the moment, but at least they're keeping possession. Howarth, no support on the outside as uh, Robinson had stepped inside. France have stolen it. Bomber the kick. Howley, the cover. That's a rare, untidy passage of play. But the French coaches won't be happy with their side because even when they kicked that ball, then no one chased it. Allowed Rob Howley to take that ball under no pressure. Seconds are ticking away here, JJ, towards the end of the opening half. How can you uh, sum this lot up in a few seconds? Well, Wales are playing great rugby. France are allowing them to, and, and they're not making any mistakes as they have done in the previous two matches in the Five Nations. France rumble on, trying to gain some momentum up front. Tournaire wearing three, tight head clock, Califano joins in. This is Carboneau. 
Bomber has to be quick. Taylor stays with him. Gibbs is still there. Offside. Just a little bit too keen that time. Colin Chavez. And uh, Padmano takes it quickly. And to Mack inside. Bernat Sal, but it went to Gibbs. And now it's Sinkinson. Strong, aggressive play from the new number seven. Played some Super 12 rugby for the Waikato Chiefs. Uh, Brett Sinkinson, his province in New Zealand, the Bay of Plenty. Plays for Wales because he claims a grandfather who came from Carmarthen. Well, this is a dream game for an open side going forward. So much movement, ball moved out wide. Got a number seven with a lot of pace. They love it. Rafael Ibanez. Keep working, put pressure. In it goes, it's taken by Fabian Pelus. Pelus of Toulouse. Born and bred. One of the few players who hasn't changed clubs in French First Division rugby. Sal is in there to do the scrum half's job, but now Carboneau has arrived as well. France move forward, Jim Fleming indicates it sets scrum, blows his whistle to end an exhilarating opening 40 minutes of rugby. It's been an absolute delight. Two tries for France for Emil and Temac, three for Wales, Colin Chavis, David James and Craig Quinnell. First kick of the second half for Neil Jenkins and this stadium, this vast stadium, 80,000 people are still buzzing after a truly extraordinary opening 40 minutes. Thrilling rugby and some brilliant tries scored by both sides. There are two changes by France for the second half. Shane Howarth takes it quite safely for Wales. He had an outstanding opening period in the red shirt. And uh, here goes Neil Jenkins to test Emil Nantemak. Charging up was Taylor. It was a fair catch. And Antemak is away. The crowd didn't like the challenge from Mark Taylor. And Wales went back the 10 metres. So it's Philippe Carboneau out to Thomas Castagnier. Castagnier just about tripped up by uh, Scott Gibbs. Legally, may I add. Comba. Held by Craig Quinnell. The biggest and the smallest on the field and it's hands on the floor. France will want to take it quickly. Their replacements, by the way, it's uh, Javier Garbajosa. He's on the, the right wing for Philippe Bernatsal. And we have Sylvain Marconnet, the prop forward. He's on for Frank Tuner. Marconnet of the Stade Francais and uh, Garbajosa of Toulouse. That's uh, French coach Jean-Claude Scurella. He played last time, Wales won in Paris, uh, JJ. Oh, he won't be a happy man at half-time. I bet there's a lot of strong language in that dressing room. It was interesting that France are going for a penalty, going for a goal. First half, they were tapping everything and moving it, playing like touch rugby. Obviously, they're taking the second half far more seriously. And here come the hand clappers, just to try and uh, lift and inspire Thomas Castagnier. Fully 55 metres, it won't get there. And Shane Howarth has called clearly for that. And dark clouds are, are gathering, and uh, it started raining as well at, at uh, Stade de France. Offside, en jeu. Half covered the stadium, uh, JJ, and it's difficult to know what effect uh, the half roof has on the breeze. There's certainly a breeze down there, and uh, perhaps it's slightly favouring Wales in the second half. Yes, well, Neil Jenkins found a big kick from the middle of the park there, so can't hurt them too much. France had taken it against Karen Jenkins' throw, it was meant for Craig Quinnell. Quinnell couldn't claim it, so it's France ball. They're driving up onto the Welsh 10 metre line. And they'll gain the put-in at the set scrum. But that was easy defending for Wills. No extra man in the line. It just passed it along the three-quarter line. No pace at all. And Wills just, just uh, drifted across and took them easily. 
Indeed, Jim Fleming indicated the ball was held off the ground, so it is Welsh put into the set scrum. And they're lying very deep behind as well. Indicating they want to move this, right as they've done from the start of the game. They set the pattern, set the tone, threw down the gauntlet, and France responded. And that's why we've had a truly marvellous game so far. Jenkins, Gibbs, Howley. Straight route down the middle. And the biggest difference in Wales's play this afternoon, they're not losing the ball at all. They lost it so much in contact against both Ireland and against Scotland. But that has been rectified. Castanier holds Mark Taylor as the Welsh centre probes for a gap. Plays on the halfway. That's uh, Sylvain Marconnet of Stade Francais. It's his fourth cap. He played in the autumn against Argentina and Australia when uh, Califano was injured and he came on as a replacement in Ireland for Califano uh, four weeks ago. You can see Castaner there, even though an excellent player he is, he's not a, a midfield tackler. You can see Mark Taylor was crossing that game line, even though Castaner was holding on to him. The other replacement, okay. by the way, uh, for France, Garbajosa, he scored two tries against Wales at Wembley last year, but what a difference. 51-0, France just tore Wales to shreds on that uh, glorious afternoon as they clinched their second successive Grand Slam. And that's Marconi. He's a dynamic runner with the ball in hand. So France had two prop forwards who can do that in Califano and Marconi. Lost it out wide and Jenkins plays strongly for Wales on the ground. Howley looks for it, but no advantage from the knock-on by France. And so it is a well-set scrum. Drive in straight, please. Wait, wait. <laughs> France coming up in that set scrum, and so it's a penalty for Wales. Jim Fleming, very decisive, very firm. And the crowd started whistling, that's just what Wales want to hear. That's a marvellous kick by Neil Jenkins. He'll be proud of his game this afternoon, as will Robert Howley as captain. Both stung by criticism after the opening two defeats. Howley's captaincy brought into question. But he's in control this afternoon, as is her partner Jenkins. In it goes, Karen Jenkins finds Chris Wyatt. Driving through at the back there. Trying to use the power of the two Cunells. Scott especially, that's a penalty, and Wales will go for goal. Killing the ball on the ground, Fabien Pelouse, the offender, wearing five. Well organised lineup by Wales, thrown to Chris Wyatt. Scott Cunell then, who is standing in the number two position, drove in on. Chris Wyatt, and there's the penalty on the floor. France played it off the ground. An indication of the way uh, modern rugby players gain their caps. Neil Jenkins is 62nd this afternoon, but only is 31st in the Five Nations, exactly half. a rare sight indeed a fairly simple chance for Neil Jenkins it's drifted wide so the score remains France 18 Wales 28 and after the fireworks of the opening half it's been a fairly quiet opening to the second period eight minutes gone he's you know. a handful for anyone Jenkins and here's another a little powerhouse in Scott Gibbs. Matthew Robinson 
And that's the first time really for Wales to lose the ball in close contact. Kain put him on very early as a replacement for Richard Dutt. Clever work there by Thomas Lievremont. Put the line up quickly, but Wills responded. Can is caught by Ben Evans. Wills have claimed the ball on the ground. On opposition, 10-meter line. Knock forward. French scrum. But Wills are working hard. And Shane Howard kicked that ball on the field, and Wills chased it in numbers, not allowing France to counter-attack. Down straight. Coach, Anders. Okay, Ramont escapes from Neil Jenkins. He's up to halfway. Good play by the number eight. Carbono switching it. And that's Antemak is away. Inside is the captain Ibanez. It's back to Emil Antemak has got a hat trick. Super play. But there's one little doubt. Was the final pass from Ibanez? To Emil Entemach, just slightly forward, but no one could deny the man from Toulouse his hour of glory. Entemach, a real handful there, making this try really. And was this a forward pass? Let's have a look. Marginal possible for this man, is a class player, has the pace to get and the strength to get over. That's what France needed to get back into this game. Well, we could argue that that was forward, but no one in the stadium would, would argue about that. Class player, this man. He started this move, broke through tackles, and he's put France right back into it. Well, it's another great afternoon in a glittering career for Emil Antemak. <laughs> Superb conversion by Thomas Castagnier. So, excitement mounts. The French crowd find their voice. It's France 25, Wales 28. It's three tries apiece, and we've had ten minutes of the second half. And now we've got noise in the stadium at last. It is a bubbling cauldron here now. Quiet at times, but now the smiles are on the French faces, and there's power in their voice. Jim Fleming says France were offside, I believe, chasing that kick, so it's a penalty for Wales. Now, this is an important kick for Neil Jenkins. Wales need the points now, because France got a good try. Their tails are up. So three points for Wales, that would be welcome. I mentioned uh, Neil Jenkins' statistics earlier. Interesting, Gareth Edwards played for 12 seasons without missing a game for Wales, gained 53 caps, 45 of those uh, were in the Five Nations. That's the way international rugby has changed. And now the booze are ringing out. They're trying to unsettle Jenkins. It's that close. And it will come to Colin Chavez for Wales. So both sides have hit the post. So that's fair. Jenkins tries for the drop goal. Under pressure. And it's taken under the bar by Antimak. And he'll attack from anywhere, this man. Teammates respond. Lombard. Pass to the invisible man in touch. Yes, and often you see Neil Jenkins missing these kicks. Allowing then the French to break away, but good tackling by Wills, stopped them bringing the ball right up the field. The replacement on for Wills, Gareth Thomas is on for Matthew Robinson. Thomas on the wing. Been out of the game for a long period with an injury, just played one game back for Cardiff last week in the Cup. Scored a crucial late try against Aberavon. He's on to gain his 31st cap for Wales. 
Jenkins took man and ball on the opposition 10 metre line and France again offend on the floor going over the ball just three points separate the two sides well Jim Fleming has been very consistent with his referee and he's saying about the French diving over he's been like that from the word go on this game so they keep on persisting what can he do about keep blowing the whistle Jenkins has missed with two well within his range in the second half. Thirteen points so far in the game. To supplement the three tries scored for Wales by Chavez, James and Quinnell. Three tries for France, all by their magical fullback Emil and Tamak. Neil Jenkins under the bar again and here goes Castaned Castaned Garbajosa tackled just outside his own 22 Carbono grim faced determined tremendous competitor that's the man from Brive Carbono again the time. Antimac tackled by Peter Rogers. France still in possession, looking dangerous, even on their own 10 meter line. Carbono is out. Olivier Bruze. Okain didn't knock it forward. Play goes on. And the ball is dead. defending by Wales here when the ball went to the ground as Chris Wyatt got his a big boot to do to just kick it anyway into touch Palouse gains the ball where's five jumps in that short line Wales penalised for pulling them all down again and there's no legal way of stopping that rumbling mall because people aren't allowed to come in at the side to challenge for the ball, you're not allowed to pull it down. And it can get very, very frustrating for rugby players. Tim Fleming of Scotland, assisted by two Irishmen today, David McHill near side. Come on, come on, side. Wyatt challenging. Almost got the ball for Wales. That's Benetton. Carbono, Carbono. Knocked on by uh, Thomas Lombard of Stade Francais. Yes, there's no need for Lombard to come inside. They should have stayed out. Carbono had made the overlap for him. A rarity, Lombard. Uh, a French international born in Paris and not in the stronghold down in the south and the southwest. France 25, Wales 28, and the scrum has turned. Peter Rogers on the loose head for Wales gained his first cap this afternoon as a 30 year old. Last time Wales won in Paris, a certain Charlie Faulkner gained his cap. Conservative estimates placed him just over the 30. Here go Wales, Howarth is out, David James, James taking on Garbajosa. But first man there is uh, Castaned, Gibbs arrives to lend his power. And now it's Colin Chavis breaking into the French half. Howley, Brett Sinkinson, Neil Jenkins, 
Peter Rogers lost possession. This could be dangerous for Wales, but no. Half a chance for France, but uh, Mark Taylor is first back. Half the Swansea partnership in midfield that is now playing for Wales. Howley almost found a little gap for himself. He's held on. Jim Fleming right on the spot. And that was an excellent tackle on Thomas Lombard, on Peter Rogers, knocking the ball out of the props hands. But Robert Howell would be disappointed, give that penalty away. He held on to it, waited for support. The French turned it, but he keep, kept holding it on. Ten points so far for Thomas Castagnier. <laughs> it's this to tie the scores as we approach the midway point of the second half. It's there, and remarkably, the score at the start of France is Wales 28, France 28, and what a final quarter in prospect. Yes, Wales have always started poorly and finished poorly in the Five Nations this year, so the next 20 minutes so important for Wales to get back into this game. Watch me to score next would be great for them. Good challenge by Quinnell. Both sides knocked it forward. Quinnell was the first, so it's a French put in. France prepare perhaps to bring on Richard Castel. Into Max, straight to Howarth. Taylor's put David James a little clear. James up to Wyatt into the 22. Great surging run from Colin Chavez. 15 meters short, Wales. It was out to Jenkins, and the outside half took his way off the ball. And that's a look of utter frustration and dejection from Wales' is number 10. David James again, significant in, the, in that lead up to that uh, move. Jenkins is disappointed, he wouldn't have scored because there were people out there anyway. Into the final quarter of a remarkable rugby match here in Paris. And uh, France and Wales are absolutely tied at 28 points apiece. Castell prepares to come on. Bennett on leaves. Castell only brought onto the bench on Thursday when Mania withdrew and uh, Reno was promoted to the senior side from the bench. So Castell is on for his 12th cap. And France have now four replacements on the field. Wyatt takes it. Now Castell straight into the action. Carboneau behind, snapping at their heels. Once they're on their own 10 meter line. Jim Fleming plays advantage again. Wales lingering offside in midfield. France try and work it clear to Lombard. Lombard, Taylor holds him. Thomas is in as well. Thomas, the Welsh replacement. Carboneau fighting to release. It comes. They've got extra men, one is Califano. It was Marconi who dropped it, and Jim Fleming brings them back. It was a long advantage to play that. But Wales were trying to kill the ball at the original ruck, and that's why Jim Fleming has brought them back. Yes, correct, referee. He did warn Wales that the hands were coming through that ruck and holding on to that ball. The hands stayed there, so he had to give the penalty. Quint 
53 minutes played. It's 28 all. We've only had three drawn games in the long history of the series between Wales and France. The last one was in Cardiff, uh, way back in 1974. The only one in Paris was eight all in 1969, exactly 30 years ago. That's Andrew Lewis, prop forward from uh, Cardiff. It's no surprise to see him stripping off because Peter Rogers, who's acquitted himself well, the London Irishman, playing at number one for Wales, but he's played very, very little rugby over the past few months. Snapped a media ligament back in October, playing against Richmond on the day after he was introduced for the first time into the Welsh squad. He's only played 20 minutes rugby since then for the London Irish. He's played a full game for Wales A and uh, 50 minutes in another game for Wales A. Robert Howley looks just a little troubled. And uh, that's the end of a very promising debut for Peter Rogers. But Andrew Lewis is on. Lewis, who played the full game against France at Wembley last year, is on for his 13th cap. Rafael Libanel finds Fabien Pellus. France driving. And they've gone through the Welsh ranks. Right on the Welsh 22. Holding on to the ball. Penalty Wales, says Jim Fleming. Pelous five developed together. They played together for the French students who won the Students World Cup way back in 92. And they've been almost ever present together over the past two or three seasons. And Jim Flemings begin to annoy this French crowd. They're whistling, but there was a pulling down here. Chris White jumping for the ball. I can see Bruze there pulling the hand down. Jim Fleming making sure Wales get up to this line quickly. He is of the same mind, obviously, as Ed Morrison of England. And uh, here's a significant change for Wales. Robert Howley can't continue. He's taken a knock to his knee. And on is David Llewellyn. What an important moment for the man from Ebu Vale. First touch. Out it goes to Quinnell. Inside to Chavis. Just the second cap for Llewellyn. He had a few minutes as a replacement when Wales was swept aside against South Africa to the tune of some 90 points a year ago. So Llewellyn is on for the Welsh captain, Robert Howley. 13 minutes left. Crossing in midfield. That's a penalty for Wales. And despite his lack of success in the second half, JJ, I'm sure that Neil Jenkins will get that little sandcastle out and aim for goal. This is an important kick for Wills. You see the crossing over here in, in midfield for France. Definite penalty, taken out the opposition, driving into them, contact made, penalty given away. Jenkins is second only to Gavin Hastings of Scotland, by the way, in points scored in Five Nations matches. He's closing in. He's now got 256. Hastings, former Lions captain, 288 for Scotland. France, 28. Wales, 28. 28 minutes gone of the second half. And a vital penalty attempt for Neil Jenkins. He struck it well. 
Marvellous kick and Wales are back ahead. He's had a, a shaky second period. Howley, the captain, disappointed to be off the field. Delighted that his side, his battling side, are back in the lead. And that was an important three points for Wales. France has been dominating the second half, winning most of the possession. The Wales find themselves back in the lead. Shane Howarth again. Attacked so well, the Welsh fullback. Another born and bred in New Zealand. Jenkins. Craig Pennell. And that's David Llewellyn. He's an all action scrum half, formerly of Newport. A man of Gwent. And swept it out to Jenkins. This is Gareth Thomas over from the right wing. Brought him on, I'm sure, to get some more physical presence on the field. That's why Matthew Robinson was replaced. A try scorer at the Parc des Princes uh, two years ago, uh, Gareth Thomas, as was Robert Howley and Alan Bateman as well. The Wills are playing a sensible game now. They're just kicking it down the line, hoping to win their line out. Play for possession, keeping the ball away from the French. It was very tight and close uh, two years ago. France just pipped it, 27 points to 22, four tries to three. Well in. Jenkins, Taylor, almost slicing through. Has he lost the ball? Yes, he has. And here goes Comba. Comba swept it out to Garbajosa. Garbajosa up to the West 10 meter line. Comba in support. Marvellous French play. Up to 10 metres outside that Welsh 22. David James retreating from an offside position, but it's still France, and they're looking so dangerous. Vital challenge by Scott Gibbs, put his man off. But here goes Lombard, he's outside Sinkinson. 15 metres short, France, trundling on, and the ball is still not dead. Reno, number seven, France within five metres. And they're lining up outright. It must be a try for the blue shirts. Out it goes, and it's Castanier. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The ball started way back up the field. And Wales lost the ball with Mark Taylor. A credit to the French. This was fabulous rugby. Look, Fabian Pelouz is a midfield handling this ball on. Yes, big second will give it to Castaner who just sprints so a fabulous try by France. It's a ninth for Thomas Castaner on the international stage. They had so many men spare. And who better to cross finally? And is that the try? That sees France home, I wonder. We've still got eight minutes left. Castaner, who saved them in Dublin with a last minute penalty four weeks ago to keep alive their hopes of a third consecutive uh, Grand Slam. Has he done it again? Castaniad, he slipped in the run-up and that could be important. But that turnover in midfield was so important, it allows the French then to counter-attack and that's the ball they want. Mark Taylor took it in way up the field. French back row got there before the Welsh back row, then they off they went. Almost all the French side handled that ball. The blonde hair restored. France's lead restored. It's 33-31. And it's 33 minutes on the watch. In this second half, Wales have challenged well at that restart. And here goes Jenkins again. And again he's through a gap. He's looking for Gareth Thomas. Nobody on his shoulder for the second time. And the ball's gone forward. But it's all in the melting pot. And Castanier's slip and failure with the conversion means that any score would do for Wales again. And France are fully aware of that. Just a precarious two-point lead for the Blue Shirts. Okay, 
as in the first half, Will should be scoring from those breaks by Jenkins. The centre's not getting with the outside half. In it goes from Carbono. First half, France would have attacked from there. Is that a late tackle on Shane Howarth? Yes, it is. Jim Fleming indicates Thomas Castagnet went in with a shoulder. And is the hero about to become a villain? Has Castagnet given advantage back to Wales? It's all eyes on Neil Jenkins. No, it was. But Jim okay. Fleming said that that was deliberate. It was accidental, but it was still late. Let's have a look at it. Chipped ahead. Well, the shoulder was up into, into in fact, into the neck of uh, Shane Howarth. Quite a dangerous tackle. It was a penalty. And it's given 15 metres in from touch. That makes it uh, a little easier for Neil Jenkins. Jim Fleming ordering the Welsh backup team off the field. Their fitness trainer, Steve Black, was there giving advice, no doubt. Another absolutely vital, crucial kick for Neil Jenkins. 35 minutes are approaching. Wales trail by two points. It's the little chip. He's turned his back. He knows it's there. And there's delight again for the travelling thousands of Welsh people. And great composure displayed once again by Neil Jenkins. And it is a truly remarkable game and a remarkable scoreline. France 33, Wales 34. We have five minutes left. That's Garin Jenkins. Competitive to the last. David Llewellyn hoists it high, puts it dead. It's out on the full, he was outside the 22, said David McHugh. Well, this is interesting. He said he was outside the 22. David McHugh is standing to the left of the 22 flag. If that's where Thewelling kicked it, then he was inside. Correct. What drama remains in these final four minutes? Not in straight, said Jim Fleming. We mentioned before he's not the favourite son. <laughs> not the, the he he was uh, referred to in Le Keep, the uh, the paper this morning as the Scotsman with the bagpipes. <laughs> That's what they think of his whistling out in France. David Llewellyn and the pressure from Carbono. It's taken away by Scott Quinnell. Quinnell into Castagnet. Castagnet did well to bring the big man down. Wales in behind. Llewellyn is there. It's out to Jenkins. Wales might have a half chance here, but Gibbs took it. It's all on the Welsh 10-metre line. And David Llewellyn is there again. Jenkins sweeps it out. And the two Quinnell brothers are in midfield. Shane Howarth is there as well. Thumping tackle from Thomas Lombard. And the ball has gone forward. Yes, if Craig had got that ball to Scott Cunnell, then he would have been away. Scott Cunnell did well from that last scrum, bringing that ball right up the field when the scrum was under wait, pressure. Wait, Crouch, wait! Come on, go Crouch, come in! 37 minutes. It's Wales, 35. France, 34. Big tackle, and not dangerous, said the referee. It was uh, Colin Chavez for Wales, but it's French ball. Out it goes to Castagnet. Castagnet, not far enough to test Shane Howarth. And cleverly, the two Quinnells stayed French side, thinking that would be a tap back for the blue shirts, but they've conceded the set scrum, and it's a chance for France. I thought for half a second uh, Castagnet was eyeing a dropped goal there. We all remember his famous last-minute drop goal uh, to beat England out here stopped. a few seasons ago. And the cheeky tongue-out that followed it and got Castagnet into a little bit of trouble. 
but it's been a great performance by Wales. The second half, they've battled to stay in touch. They've been controlled. They've cut out all mistakes. What a difference to the, the last two internationals against Scotland and Ireland. Played some fabulous rugby on top of it. The second half, they've had to work, and the, dis the discipline in this side has been magnificent. France are seeing their chance of history slip away, perhaps, with the passing seconds. We're almost up to 39 minutes. But as this game has gone, I don't think the drama is over yet. Carbono, Castaned, Castaned just held there by Neil Jenkins. But France look in determined mood, driving through Olivier Brouzé. Now it's swept out of the backs again, and Castaned is in pole position, back at outside half. France, they've upped the tempo, they've upped the pace, but they've lost the ball. And Wales will have a chance here to clear because they'll have a set scrum. Knocked on, and we're in the final minute of a truly amazing match. Worthy of a glorious new stadium at the start of France. No side in the history of the Five Nations has gone on to win three consecutive Grand Slams. That was France's ambition for this season. But Wales are within seconds of being denying them, but here come France. Wales in a mix-up at the base of the scrum. Carbono. that's Fabien Pelus. They're within inches of the Welsh try line. Within inches of saving it again. And it's a penalty, a punch came in from the Welsh side. And the drama remains. It's been unfolding since the opening seconds. Carbono denying Quinnell there. The ball he wanted to get away to the three quarters. Carbono's had a fairly quiet match, but that was an important take by him. And this an important decision for France. It's decision by committee. We're into stoppage time. And finally, it all rests. On this man, Thomas Castagnier. If France achieve their ambition, if they realise their dream this season, then Castagnier will surely be the hero. And memories of Dublin a month ago come flooding back. Castaniad then broke the hearts of the Irish, who'd gone for such a long period without a victory over France anywhere. Wales have waited 24 years for a victory in Paris. Is Castaniad going to deny them as well? Castaniad strokes it. It's past the post. Huge disappointment for France. Big relief for Wales. And Thomas Castaniad has failed to repeat what he did in Dublin. Jim Fleming has blown his whistle. That is a truly remarkable afternoon of rugby. And Welsh joy is unbounded. It's no wonder at all. They waited a long, long, long time. 24 years ago, 1975. 11 consecutive defeats here in Paris. But they've come and...